In this video, we are going to learn about the grid layout. What we are going to make is going to look like this. I am fully aware this looks horrible, but that's not the point of this lesson. What I want you guys to do is to understand how to create a grid and how to place elements in here. Let's talk about how it works. When we are using the grid method, we are creating a grid. Inside of this grid, we can determine the number of rows and columns. On top of that, you can also set the width and the height of each column or row. You can see this one quite well. For example, this cell here has a certain amount of width and a certain amount of height. This you can set yourself quite easily. Once you have that, you can place widgets in columns and rows. And on top of that, you can also specify how many cells a widget is going to occupy. For example, this could look like this, like this, or like this, where you have one widget overlapping with another widget. In the most basic sense, this is a very simple system. However, there's one limitation you need to be aware of. Like with Pack, Grid only determines how much space a widget can occupy, but not how much it will occupy. And this difference is important. Inside of the pack method, we had the fill argument. Inside of a grid, we are using sticky. This one works like this. This could be one cell inside of our table. And we can specify to which border the widget is going to stick. And here we have north, east, south, and west. And this we use to place a widget inside of here. By default, a widget is always going to be right in the middle. However, if we, for example, specify sticky north, then the widget is going to stick at the top. This would look something like this. Note here that the size of the widget hasn't changed. However, when we define two arguments in here, like north and south, in that case, the widget is going to retain the width, but is going to occupy the entire height of the cell. Let me clean this up a tiny bit. Our widget is going to stick to the north, and to the south, which means the height of the widget is going to occupy all of this. However, the width of the widget is going to be determined by the content. For example, if we have a label with some text, then the width of the text is going to determine the width of the widget. Although, if we specify all four directions, north, south, east, and west, let me clean this up a bit, if we have all four directions, we are telling the widget to stick to all four sides of this cell. And that way, we have one widget that is quite large, or, well, as large as the cell it's in. That is quite a bit of stuff to cover, so let's jump right in and let's have a look at some examples. Here I have some very basic code. If I execute all of this, we can see that we have an empty window. That window we're getting from these lines here, and we are running main loop on the window we created. Besides that, we have quite a few different widgets, but right now we are not packing them, so they are not visible. We have four different labels, and each of them has a background color. Besides that, we have two buttons, and we have an entry widget. All of these I want to place using the grid method. For that, first of all, I have to define a grid. For that, you take the container and you run two methods. The first one is called column configure. This is going to create one or multiple columns. For now, I only want to create one, at least on this line of code. This needs two arguments. First of all is the index, and the index here is going to be column zero. Then we need what is called the weight. And this is going to determine how wide this column is. For now, I'm going to set it to one. Once we have that, I want to duplicate this thing and change the zero to a one. With that, we have two columns. I want to duplicate this thing another time and change the column to a row. The index now being zero and the weight being one. With this, what we created is, this is our window and we have two columns, one and two. This is what we are getting from here. Besides that, we have one row. This is what we are getting here. I want to place a widget. To place label one, I have to get the widget, label one, and then use the grid method. I have to specify a row and I have to specify a column. For both of those, 
we have to use the index numbers we specified earlier, meaning the column could either be 0 or 1. Let me set it to 0 for now. The row right now always has to be 0 because we only have a single row. With that, we are placing label 1. Let me run the code. And there we go. We have one label. The same thing we can do with label 2. I'm going to copy this entire line, change label 1 to label 2. The row I'm not going to touch, the column I'm going to change to 1. If I run this now, we have label 1 and label 2. And here we already have the first issue. That being that the cells we are specifying, let me draw them on here. We have column 1 and we have column 2. And the two are separated roughly here. Besides that, we have one row. The issue we have right now is that there's a ton of white space both around label 1 and label 2. And this comes back to the issue that is kind of annoying in tkinter, and that is that these cells only create a space for the widget, but we are not telling the widget to occupy that entire space. As a consequence, we are ending up with a huge amount of white space. Sometimes you want that, but most of the time you probably don't. So let's get rid of it. To get rid of it, we need the sticky argument. In here, we have to specify north, south, east, or west. The order of the letters here really doesn't matter. And let me just run it like this. Now this is looking much better. We are telling the widget to stick to all four sides. Although I guess I jumped a bit ahead. For now, let's get started by just specifying north. If I run this now, the widget sticks all the way to the top of the cell. I can do this with the other sides as well. For example, if I specify sticky to west for the first widget, and then I also add sticky with east, then we can see we have each of the widgets on the side of the window. Although I guess if I flip this around with east and west, now we can see where the borders of these cells are. Although that's not usually how you would use sticky. Instead, most of the time, you specify two sides. For example, east and west tells the widget to span the entire width of a cell. You could also specify north in here, and then we are sticking the entire thing to the top. You do have to play around with this a tiny bit, but eventually it's going to come quite handy. Although most of the time, you just specify north, south, east, and west, you are occupying the entire cell and you are done. That is basically the fundamental thing you have to understand about grid layouts. I guess what we can do is create a few more rows and columns and then play around with this quite a bit more. I want to have three columns in total, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And already, if I run this after creating more columns, you can see the layout has changed because now we have column 0, column 1, column 2, and column 3. So the space we have for each column is going to be less. What you can also do is change the weight of each column. For example, if I change this to a 2, then we have even less space. Let me add a higher number so you can see this a bit better. We still have 0, 1, 2, and 3 columns, but the final column is going to be much wider than the other columns. I can demonstrate this quite well by placing label 3, this one is going to be in row 0, but column 3. And I want this to go from east to west. There you can see we have a really wide label. We can actually make it even easier, because these three lines are basically identical. They all have the same weight, we just want to specify a different index. For that, we can also add a tuple in here for the index, and just call this 0, 1, and 2, like we have done before. And this is going to give us the same thing, which means I can get rid of this. Now we are creating three columns with the index 0, 1, and 2, all with a weight of 1. And then we have a final column with the index 3, and this is much wider. So if I run this, we are getting the same thing. The majority of the time, you are going to have columns or rows that have the same weight. And then using tuples for that is much easier to read. For the rows, I also want to have multiple I have one, two, and three. Or well, four rows in total, but you get the idea. And like with the columns, I can also change the weight. Let me change this one to a three. Now if I run this, all of our stuff is at the top because this is where the original row zero was. 
This one here is row zero. And before we had the other rows, this was the only one. But now we have a ton of stuff down here. So all the existing elements we had were pushed upwards. But these cells I can now use quite easily. For example, let's go with label two. Instead of row zero, I want to place this one at row one. If I run this now, it is a bit further down. And let me change sticky to north, south, east, and west. Then you can see this a little bit better. There we go. This is looking pretty good. This could also be column two, or it could be row two, like so. The system here, I hope, is quite easy to understand. It really doesn't get that complicated. So we can cover the next part, and that is either column, span, or row span. Let's start with row span, since I do have quite a few rows that I'm not using. Row span is telling the widget how many rows it should occupy. By default, this is one. If I run this, we are not seeing any change. However, if I change this to a two, now we're occupying two rows. And if I change it to a three, we are occupying all of the rows. Let me draw this actually. In this widget right now, we have four different rows. This one here is row zero. Then we have roughly here row one, row two, and the rest is row three. This one is much taller than the other rows because we have given it a greater weight. And this row span is telling the widget to occupy this starting cell, then another cell, and then another cell. Those numbers are one, two, and three for the argument. The same thing you can also do with the columns. Let's use label three for that. I want this thing to be in row one, and the column for now should be column zero. Also, I want to have north, south, east, and west. So if I run this now, we have label three on the left side. However, I want to specify column span. This widget should span three columns. If I run this now, we have a much wider widget that is overlapping with label two. To make this even more visible, we can cover one additional concept. That is two different kinds of padding. If you have watched the pack video, this should be familiar. We either have pad X or pad Y, and this is going to expand the space around the widget to give some space between the current widget and any neighboring widgets. Meaning pad X or pad Y creates space around the widget. Besides that, we have iPad X or iPad Y, and this one is expanding the border of the current widget. It essentially makes it larger. Back in the code, to make this label free here visible, we want to add pad X, let's say 20, and pad Y, let's go with 10. Although before that, I want to fix the typo. Let's try it now. There we go. There is quite a bit of space in the X and the Y axis. Although on the X axis, this side, we have a larger amount because pad X is twice as large as pad Y. And if you changed pad Y to iPad Y, we can see, well, not much of a difference, but let me add a much larger number in here, 100, gonna be much more visible, there we go. Basically what happened now is that this used to be row zero, then we had row one, row two, and then down here, row three. Originally, label three occupied this height here. But because of iPad Y, we are pushing the widget up and down by quite a bit. Or not really pushing, we are rather expanding it quite a bit. What you want to be careful about here is that this is shrinking other cells. Label one in particular has become much smaller. So do be careful with this one. I only want to use pad Y with 10 pixels. Like so, this is much cleaner. What can also be really useful, let me place label four with the grid method. You can place elements in the corner. For example, this label four, I want to have in the bottom right corner. For that, I will need row, that is the maximum, which is row three. And I want to have the maximum column, which is also number three. Running this now, gets me label four, but not in the ideal position. Instead, this widget should be in the bottom right here. For that, we can use sticky. I want this to stick to the southeast, 
If I run this now, there we go. The label is all the way in the bottom right. Even if we resize the window, it will always be in the bottom right. I guess I didn't mention it, but the grid always scales along with the window. Which lets you make really cool stuff. I think at this point, this is becoming quite repetitive. Ultimately, using grid is quite simple. It really doesn't get that complicated. That being said, there's one thing that can be kind of annoying. Grid has a tiny bit of a uniformity issue, which means when you have cells with content, their width is not what you would expect. Let me do an example. Let's say we have a grid like this and we want to place two widgets, one and two. Inside of this example, we have zero, one, two, and three columns. They all have a weighting of one. Let me use a color like this. They have one, 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 and one. They are all supposed to be equally wide. The issue is if this cell here is empty and this cell here is empty, then tkinter is going to make the existing cells with content wider than they are supposed to be. There is a formula to calculate the exact numbers, but most of the time you don't need that because you don't want this behavior at all. Because it's, well, inconsistent and kind of annoying. But let me demonstrate this issue first. I want to comment out the third column, and I also want to comment out all of the other rows besides the first one. Besides that, I also want to comment out what we have done for label 2, 3, and 4. That way, I can focus on one specific thing. I already have label 1 with a grid, and this one occupies the first row and the first column. I am just going to copy this and change column 0 to column 2. If I run this now, you can already see the issue quite well. This column here and this column here, they have the same width but this one here in the middle is much less wide. I guess much less wide is a bit of an exaggeration, but it is less wide than the other two. The reason for that is if a column or a row has a widget in it, Tkinter is going to give it a bit more space. That being said though, you can fix this one quite easily. All you have to do is add one more argument and that's called uniform. In here, you are supposed to add a string, and you can give different columns a similar uniformity. In practice, though, you are hardly ever going to use it. Most of the time, I just add an A for every single row or column, like so, and then every single row or column have a uniformity. I can run this now, and now we have all the columns having the same size, or a uniform size. This is still going to work with the weighting. And that way, you have much more expected behavior. With that, I can get rid of label 2 and uncomment everything else. Like so. This stuff here I want to uncomment as well. Like I have done this stuff here. All of those are going to get uniform. Also, I want to change the weight of column with the index 3 to a 2. And now if I run this, we get something that looks very much like the example I had earlier. That one looked like so, and we are definitely getting there. That is leaving us just with the exercise, and then we are done with this video. What I want you guys to do is going to add the buttons and the entry field. As a reminder, the demo app I had looked like this. You have to add this button and this button and the entry field. Try to figure out in which row and which column they are and see if you can place them as well. Shouldn't be too difficult. So pause the video now and try to sort this. We know that button 1 is very easy to place because we have row 0 and we have column 3. So this button is in the top right. It has to have these values. For button 2, this one here. I know we have one row here and we have one row here. And besides that, we have one column here, another column here. And that brings us then to this cell, which means this one is going to be column two and row two. Let's start by placing those two and then we can work on the entry field. I want to start by placing button one 
with the grid method. For this one, I know that the row is supposed to be zero and the column needs to be three. If I run this now, we have the button in the top right, but the button doesn't fill the entire available space. This we do by using sticky and adding north, south, east, and west, which is what I am always using, but you could change the numbers here around as you want. This could be north, east, south, west. It really doesn't matter. Tkint that just cares about the numbers being present in there. I can duplicate this line now and button two. I want to place in row two and column two. Let's see, this is looking pretty good. Finally, we have to place, let me open it again. We have to place the entry widget. This one is a tiny bit more tricky. For example, we know that this button here is on row two, which makes all of this row number three. The issue is the entry is not perfectly centered in here. That would be roughly this line. Instead, what I have done for the entry is I have taken up row two and three and place the entry widget in the middle of that, which places it roughly here, which means we want to have column number three, but then for the row, we want to start on two, but occupy two rows in total. That should be fairly easy to implement. I want to get my entry widget. I want to place it using grid. The row is going to be two and the column is going to be three. Like so, if I run this now, we have the entry widget right next to the button. To push it down, I want to add a row span. It should occupy two rows. If I run this now, there we go. This entry field is now in the position we had before. You could make this a bit more explicit by adding sticky to it, although that would give us a really large entry field. Like so, that's a bit weird because entry only allows one line of input but it certainly works. In this case though, I don't want to add sticky in here. I guess we can add sticky for east and west. Like so, that I think is a bit better. With that, we have all of the basics of the grid method. I hope it wasn't too bad. If you understand grid, you understand the most common layout method in Tkinter. This one, especially for more complex layouts, you are going to use all the time.